the Hux, the Hux and the MPA. Once martial law came into effect, traveling around the Philippines was restricted in some areas because the Philippine army would control areas and they wouldn't let you pass. Within a year, we got invited to a party. My friends whose father worked for the embassy. We met this one of these generals. He started, you know, asking about our travels in the Philippines. And uh, we go, yeah, you know, we, we love the Philippines. We love, you know, we're like trying to find places to surf, you know, to, you know, bring surf. We were saying, yeah, we're going to bring surfing to the Filipino people, <laughs> which you know, <laughs> they weren't, they weren't going to go in the water back then. No Filipinos were going to go in the water. Really. This general gave all four of us his business card. He wrote his his personal phone number and he goes, this is this is your card. They stop you and they won't let you go somewhere. You just show them this card, tell them to call me. And that was the, that was our, that was our key. And from from there on out, any checkpoint, they tell you, no, we just show them the card and explain. And it was like, a yeah. VFT card. So, so yeah, that's when, after we got the card, then we were then we were, we were able to go to province anytime we wanted. We were able to go to Samar. We were able to go to Chargao, you know, with any time. Because actually one time one time one guy actually called because he didn't believe it. I'm sure the guy thought we made the card, you know, and just made it all up. You know, it was like bullshit. He got in trouble for that. <laughs> so yeah. It was kind of spooky back then because everybody no matter where you went out in the province everybody had the big long bolos and you know once you got way out there in the middle of nowhere some people carrying around rifles you know and they had handguns too so and we didn't have any weapons so you know it's like we're kind of at the mercy of everybody actually that we're more you know what we were most afraid of in the philippines snakes Poisonous really? snake, yeah. Because a lot of places that we went to go search for and explore, you're 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 cutting in and out of the jungle, and in the jungle there's snakes everywhere. But even the grassy fields, you know, we cut across. You can see cobras or vipers. Like, oh god! And then sea snakes, sea snakes and sharks, tiger sharks. You know, they're 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 everywhere. So yeah, that was our biggest fear. Not not the NPA, but I mean, you know. Maybe we were just lucky, but it, and I was too young and stupid to know how close we came to, to having a big problem. But, you know, it just came back on a couple of places. Because see, back then, the only way to... There was no surf forecast. The only way that we knew that there was a swell coming, I made friends with this Navy guy who was the weather forecaster for the U.S. Navy pilots. He worked at the weather facility there. You know, that's back when they just had the big charts and he would have to determine how strong the winds were going to be, what direction, how big the swell, open swells and stuff like that. It was pretty primitive back then. We were able to get our hands on from 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 base, you know, we were, hey, we need some charts of this area. What can you do for us? Yeah, so so just with a with a plain old road map, a Philippine road map and a nautical chart and just a guess of when we might catch something. That's how we got to places. That's how we went around. And sometimes it was good, and sometimes it was just dead flat, you know. And, but you'd always check it out. So I understand that getting around back then was really primitive compared to what you got today. Mm. I mean, the first buses, trains, trains, and, and planes that we got around in the Philippines is like people wouldn't even get on them nowadays. It was sketchy getting around. Back then, we also had access to our motorcycles. We could cover a lot of territory on a on a recon mission, check it all out, and then go back there later. So a lot of times, these little recon missions, the only thing we do is bring our swim fins. We take one of those and some goggles to check out the reef, and we take off and hit the road. Buses were like, dude, the buses you got now are insane. They get, they get from Manila to Apari in what, eight hours? And it would take three days. Three you? days back then, yes.
Even if you went up the coast from Subic all the way to Apari and all the way back, you're talking three days. They had Filipino ra Philippine Rabbit and Victory Liner back then and Pantrancas and Pantranco and, and a couple of other and all the time, all the time. Uh, out there in the province, those roads are still skinny, okay? But back then they're even skinnier. And you would always, always hear uh, these stories that in the news, in the news, on the newspapers, two buses just colliding head on. You know, playing chicken, like who's gonna give, who's gonna give me a room? They're playing. It was spooky back then, riding the bus, man. It was spooky. And, and the ferries were even worse. In fact, we rode a train from Manila down towards Diet. I guess that train's not even around anymore. That was cool, man. <laughs> that was cool. I dug that part. You know, right? Yeah, so I understand. Getting around the Philippines, it was a logistical nightmare. Unless you knew somebody rich who had a helicopter. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Back in the in the seventies, that's that was the only time that we ever saw a foreign surfer. It's in 1970, the end of 1974. We had to make a, a bus transfer to a different bus. We were going up these flight of steps, and my friend goes, "Hey man, that guy has a surfboard." And we all look across and we're where? Because you know, we had never seen any traveling surfer. The only surfers that we ever met back then were military personnel. So to see this long haired blonde surfer carrying a surfboard across town square was kind of a big shock to us. So we like flagged him over and he turned out being Australian. He, you know, we just, we made small talk and stuff like that. And, uh. and he, goes, he goes, you know, where are you going? We're, we're going south. <laughs> and go, where are you going? He goes, oh, I'm going north. <laughs> and it was kind of one of those awkward moments, you know, cause, even back then, it's like, we're not gonna tell you exactly where to go unless you got, them, unless you got something to share, you know? Okay, so it finally came down to, you know, where should I go up north? And, and we, we go, well, do you wanna, do you wanna go to the Pacific side or, or you know, you wanna go to the South China Sea side? And then, you know, he goes, oh, you know, might as well do both. The Australian guy actually wanted to buy our, our nautical charts. I'm like, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> so. So, you know, finally he like he goes, okay, well, where should I go? And I go, well, where are we going to go? He's like, we told him Balear or La Union, okay, which now today is the two epicenters up north, you know, Balear and La, La Union. He didn't he didn't say Targao. He said, uh, uh, I think DAPA... That was where he told us to go, you know. He didn't say Shargao Island. He just he gave us the name of the of the town. It wasn't Boyum. It wasn't. It was. It wasn't Boyum. The guy who died there, Australian guy. It wasn't him. He's not the first. You know who I think, you know who I think the first was? What? Who? That guy we met on the road in that town on the bus. That was 1974. Maybe that was Australian. Uh, I think that is him. Because we asked him, you know, is there any surfers down there? He goes, dude, I'm the only guy. That was the only time I saw him. That was it. After you bumped with the Australian, would you say that you, you guys were the first surfers in the Philippines? No, because... No, because prior to me moving there, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I, you know how the Australians are they want to claim their first at, at everything you know but uh, I'm gonna have to say you know American military personnel or American dependence of military personnel or American Australian business interests in Manila were the first surfers okay and we knew. We knew that we were the first servers in, in almost all the places we went. We were the first ones they had ever seen. So, yeah, there was like a group of, of 10 of us, 10 of us, 10 to 12 of us that were really active about traveling all around. And, you know, every weekend or every other weekend, point at a spot on the map, you know, like, how's the, how's the, How's the weather and the swell going to be? Let's try this spot. So.
that thank you for the acknowledgement but back then it was it was a rush back then it was like stumbling upon something that you know that someone would chew chew their hand off to go surf now it's like it, yeah very it's very we are just like any curious kids we always what's around the next corner what's over the you know what's up in the next bay and you know just remember it's you know i'm just part of a group of kids that wanted to surf and and we were all had that that wanderlust you know we wanted to okay this, you're living in a nation that's got 7000 islands okay you got the pacific ocean on one side and on the other side you got one of the most stormiest seas in the world all right there's got to be surf here there's got to be and when you're lucky enough to catch it when there's actually a swell you're rewarded with some very very good waves and you're in the right place at the right time so yeah being part of that crew going out there and trailblazing and doing stuff back then yeah it, you know, a lot of people will like say, "Ah, oh, he's full of shit. He didn't do all that." Like, I really don't care. You know, like, like, there's other people say, "No, no, we beat you." I go, "Fuck, okay, whatever you say. I don't care. I got nothing to prove. I got pictures and memories to back it up." So, yeah, that's the thing about those old pictures. They got the dates on the back of them. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. You know? It's like, oh, this is like, oh yeah, here it is, 1976, pal. 1974. Yeah. So, so yeah, you know it. it you know, I, uh, it, yeah. I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna get the red carpet treatment when I, you know, yeah, if for I get sure. Yeah. Time, you know, but it, it, yeah. I think I think you know what what has happened in the in the Philippines or surfing is great. You know, it's like it finally filtered in. It finally trickled down. You know, it's like. You know, more and more, more, more and more people going there to, to travel and surf, and and over the years, you know, I've I've reluctantly told a couple of you know famous people, that, you know, yeah, there's surf there. You know, just go in this area, and I'm not going to tell you exactly where to go, but got your nautical chart. And just go in this area, you'll find something. Yeah, so so yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>